We had lots of plans to do um, different things. Our makerspace was something we've been working on and it was moving forward. We were doing lots of programming. We had lots of people coming in here for events, for meeting, just regular meetings, plus programming that we did for, for kids and adults just to check out a book. Our audio books and e-audio books and e-books were just going going very well. So we were just tootling along, having, uh, you know, looking forward, trying to do what we could to bring people in, to get them interested in books, to get them interested in the programs and activities we had. And in March, it just came to a crashing halt. Before we get past it, remind yeah. me of what the makerspace was and how it was getting a lot more use. Okay. Our makerspace, we've, we started it small and it just was a, um, a place to people come in and do, right now, primarily handcrafts. We have um, like a sewing machine. We have some things to do, um, uh, cutting out a cry cut machine that you can cut out uh, pieces, uh, a big poster um, maker type thing. We've had um, a scanner so you could come in and bring photographs or scrapbooking and scan them so you've got them on your computer. So just different things they could make in-house or make small, and it, but it was combined with our teen room. So it was sort of a mixed-use thing, so we started looking at how we could expand that, and that's what we've been working on for a while now, and we'll continue that. We closed completely um, for a few weeks, and then um, sent, sent our staff home, gave them work to do um, at home. Most of them were doing that. We were still answering phones from home, uh, taking book requests, ordering books, that kind of stuff, trying to get things going, keep things going. Because at that point, we thought, oh, this is a couple of weeks, <laughs> we're going to be out of this, and we'll be, you know, back at work. Uh, how quickly that changed. And then we started bringing staff back in um, in April, I think, the beginning of April, where we could do more things in here. On a limited basis, not everybody was coming back in, um, but we brought people so we could do more. We started offering curbside service so that if people could just drive up, we'd put the book out for them or the materials they wanted, and then they could take it home and bring it back later. Um, we started quarantining our books because we didn't know about how long um, the virus lasted on paper or on plastic we have found since then it's not as long as they originally thought so that's great but we still quarantine books right now um, and then we started doing virtual programming almost right away my staff switched from doing things in-house with the kids to doing it online so that we had programs for the kids we had some programs for the adults so that there was something to engage them with the library that was our goal to keep them remembering that the library was here, we were still providing services and we were still trying to help them in any way we could. Story time for the kids. They did some STEM type programs too. Uh, so a lot was were the kids. For adults, they did some handcrafts and they did crafts for the kids also at the same time. Uh, we've done a trivia night uh, almost every month so that we could, um, people could, again, get engaged people in that way, be something different. We have our book, I think there's one of the book clubs that's online. So we've just tried to do anything any activity we could think of um, to, sh to show people and to get them involved and get them seeing the library still there and, and providing services. We started looking at how we could actually work in a real environment and still keep people safe. So we started buying PPE. We'd already had, you know, we were, everybody was wearing masks. We, we instituted that almost from the very beginning that if you worked here, you had to have a mask on. Um, and I, I really do think that's one of the things that has saved us from a lot of, of illness. We also started putting up the, the plastic shields you see. We started moving people. We, before we brought people back, we started separating them out so nobody was sitting right beside each other. The six feet rule was in place. So we have moved lots of tables. Uh, we also here and for the public, uh, before we let them in, removed all the tables and chairs so that they weren't staying long. Because again, it's the longer you stay in the building the more chances there are. Um, so we took all, everything down. We used our meeting rooms to store all the furniture because we had to put them in. We put in the, the easy chairs as well as the tables so that we wanted people to be able to come in, get a book, get a DVD, and then, then leave. Um, not ideal, but it was a way to get them to get something. So we started that the 1st of June and we're one of the first in the state to start providing the actually in-house uh, service. We've had slowly added back some tables and chairs uh, so that people could come in and sit because that was the, the probably the biggest thing we had requested. We stopped all meetings um, and we slowly added back the smaller meeting rooms. We still don't ha weren't allowing uh, the large, you know, gatherings that we had in the big meeting room downstairs. But on the second floor here at the main library, we have larger meeting rooms and in some of our branches we have, I mean, smaller meeting rooms. 
Uh, in our, some of our branches, we have small meeting rooms. So we allowed people to meet two, normally two people, to meet in those. And that way we were able to allow some people to have a little bit more privacy and a little bit of chance to um, get some work done that they need to do. Because that, that's a constant request. Is we need, in fact, I got one yesterday. Someone wanted to, to book a room. Uh, so it, it's something we need to do, and we'll hopefully get back to that as quickly as we can. So we've stayed with that. We have continued to do that. We were trying to offer more services, trying, you know, trying to keep things going. We still weren't doing in-house programming, but we were doing the virtual and, and just, just moving along and keeping us going. After Christmas, with the spike getting so horrible, we decided that um, it just wasn't fair to my, our staff or the patrons to stay open right now. We had a few cases with staff members, so we decided to go to curbside for a short period of time, which means that we don't allow people into the main part of any of our branches. Um, we are trying to work through that so that they can come in, um, they can still come in and pick up a book, they can call us or go online and order books, they can just come in and we'll pull books for them. We're also providing at the main library copying, printing, and faxing services. And some of our branches are doing that also if they've got the space and the ability to do it safely. Because that's the key word. It doesn't do any good if I do all this and then I still expose par part of my staff. Uh, and, some of the sta and the staff is also going to a staggered schedule so that not everyone is here at the same time. So if one group gets sick, hopefully I'll have enough people in the other group to keep things going and we've already had to sort of institute that at two of our branches. You can download ebooks, you can download e-audio books so you can listen to them. That's what I do all the time on my phone. Um, and they can go on phones, tablets, we have magazines that you can read. If you want to read the latest Southern Living and you don't want to have to pay for it, you can download it for us, from us and it just disappears off your uh, phone after a while. Um, we have movies, TV shows, we have uh, comic books. So we've got those, are, that's through Hoopla. Um, and Hoopla also has e-books and e-audiobooks. Um, Overdrive has e-audiobooks and e-books. We have Tumble Books, which is a program for kids that it will actually read the book to the child. So you see the, they see the book, book pages turn, so it's a physical book being read to the child. It is actually even in other languages. So if you've got a, a child that is, uh, I think it's Spanish, French, German, there may be one other language. Um, they can hear it in, in, in another language. If you need to learn how to fix your car, there, there's a car repair database. Um, we have, and some of ours are paid for by us and some are paid for by the state, which is great. We also have, if you're into genealogy, we have Ancestry, uh, Ancestry Library and Heritage Quest that you can do online, you can do it from your home. Ancestry Library has in the past been only in-house where you would have to come into the library physically to use it, but because of the pandemic, they have released it to other to you to just do it at home. So if you're doing genealogy, now's the time to get on our system and go into Ancestry Library and Heritage Quest because you'll find an amazing amount of material and it's all free. You don't have to pay anything because Ancestry Library is, is normally or Ancestry.com is a subscription basis and we've got the free version through the library. Uh, and that's something that we pay for. There's Novelist. If you're looking for a book and you don't know what to read, you've read everything by the, all the authors you like, you can put in, you want books that are similar to what John Grisham writes, and it'll give you a list of authors that write like John Grisham or have similar type books. Go to research on our website and it'll show you all the list of all the things we have. We have um, the main library and then eight branches. So we have them in, uh, let's see if I can do them right, Belton, Honeypath, Iva, uh, Piedmont, Pendleton, Powdersville, Williamston, and then another one here in Anderson at the Westside Community Center. So eight branches, they are open, um, a little bit different hours right now because of the pandemic. It's on our, our website if you see it, but normally they have been open from 10 to 6 like we have been. We did reduce our hours a little bit because of the pandemic, um, and they're not open on Saturdays. But they're still providing services. You can still go get curbside from them. You can call them or go online and order books from them. I mean, our numbers are down because we're used to having a lot of people being able to come in. Um, if you look at our door count, it's, it's down because of, of people not going to meetings. That's always been a big part of our, our use. But it's not as down as much as I thought it would be. We're probably at about 75% before this last shutdown that we are just doing. Um, so number-wise, we're not horrible. Uh, people, because they couldn't get physical books a lot of times, so the audio, the e-audio and the e-books have just blossomed and bloomed and grown and um, people are using those a lot more, which is great. We, we have a wide collection on Libby 
and on Hoopla, and we want people to use those because we're paying for them, so we'd like them to be used. There are still people, I mean, I like a physical book, too. It's, you know, I, I like having it in my hand. But the convenience of being able to download a book to my phone and listen to it on my car radio is just invaluable. If you do any kind of traveling, it is so much easier. We had a gentleman in here Monday, and he was he needed some audio books, so we went and pulled some for him. And I said, have you tried Libby? I said, if you, you know, go online and do this. And he was like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know I could do this. And that way he doesn't necessarily have to come in here. Um, we would like him to. I mean, we're not trying to keep people out. But sometimes the convenience of not coming into the building is, is really good, especially, again, during this time we have people at home that, that don't want to or can't come in, uh, even inside just to get a book. So this allows them to do that, and I think that's going to continue. I think it's going to continue with most of our businesses. They're still going to be offering. I mean, curbside is fabulous. If you go to a store and you drive up and they put in your car, I mean, what could be better? So we're doing that same kind of thing here. It's just with our books and it's free. I think one of the things is we'll still keep that distance piece. You know, where we have moved people, we'll probably leave them just because who knows what the next thing could be. Um, We'll continue to offer some virtual programming as we go along because I think that's, again, an easy thing to do and just it engages people that might not be able to come into the facility. Same thing with some online programming. I see that expanding even more um, as we can do a few more things. We want people to come back in, but we're going to have to continue to adapt and to grow to what they really need. And if people are used to, to the online and to the videos, then, then we'll provide them. Or we're taking over our South Carolina room and changing it into the makerspace. And one of the things we're working there and in our meeting rooms downstairs is to get uh, some new technology so that we can, you can continue to Zoom. I don't think that's going to go away. I think people are going to continue to want to um, meet hybridly. So we're going to try to provide the things that they need for that. So we're going to, I don't, I think some of the things we have figured out now, we'll continue to use and continue to go on and, and do them. Things like curbside, that's probably going to be something we'll just, if somebody calls and needs a book and can't come in for whatever reason, we'll still take it out to them. Um, it'd be lovely if we had a drive up window like some libraries, but we don't, but we'll make it work with what we have. So we want to provide services to people they get used to it and, and we'll provide it. One of the things we're working on and have been working on is our children's garden. Um, you can't get into it right now, but one of our staff members here has worked tremendously hard on upgrading it, cleaning it out. She worked with Master Gardeners. She got several grants that helped put in some materials and put, um, there's a sensory garden down there now. So you can go down and, and see that. There's, they've all got, they're all labeled. It's a musical piece. They can go out there and play music. There's a chalkboard. Um, some of that was done with uh, Councilman Wooten while he was uh, here in office, gave us a grant which allowed us to buy some of that material so that we could provide, again, just a reason for kids to go outside. Because that's, again, I, I think we, that garden has never been well used just because it's, it's a hot area. There's no shade or whatever. But we're trying to make it a little bit more accessible and, and encourage kids to get out because we know the fresh air, doesn't matter whether the pandemic's going on or not, is important. So we'll continue to grow that and to work with that. We're also working on our story walk for that area. And a story walk is basically where we'll take um, a book, uh, a children's book, of course, and um, make copies of the page and do it in a, literally a walk down so that the kids and parents will walk down, read the book page, go to the next. There'll be activities in between there to make them, like here you get to this, this page of the book and it's, you read the book and then at the bottom it may say, now do three jumping jacks or something again to engage them and to keep them active and keep them going. We did that downtown with the city of Sump city of Anderson. They um, provided, they took Scott Foster's book um, and um, made posters out of it, put it in the storefronts, I don't know if you saw it, and then uh, it gave people a chance just to walk along the storefronts, read the story. Hopefully they went into the stores. The kids and adults got to read the story and got to get that word out. And hopefully they came and checked out the book and read it here too. Um, but we hope to continue that also in the future. So we're, t we're looking at ways like that, that we can continue to work with other groups and other organizations. Because of space um, and just even the volunteer needs, we're looking at our um, cafe area. It is, it's never been a real profitable thing. They usually break even, which is fine, but it's, you know, it's not been a money maker um, for the friends. The bookstore usually makes more because it's all, everything's donated and so then we, we uh, 
make money off of that, which is wonderful for the friends because they then give it back to the library for children's programming and adult programming and youth programs. You know, the city is doing their kitchen program and they're doing, and there's other people out there. We want to look to see if anybody would be interested in coming in and do like a pop-up shop. Come in for a couple of weeks and sell your products um, at no cost. You know, it's just, we would provide it for you and then um, go away and <laughs> get another group in. So we're trying to do something like that to use the space so that again, it draws people into the library because they're coming for the library or they're coming for this pop-up. Um, but it gives, our, our entrepreneurs a chance to get their stuff out without having to open up a full store. We're not actively doing it right now, but that's something we really want to work toward to provide it because it's in a perfect location. It's right as you come in the door. It'll be easy to get to. Um, there's enough room for a small one. So, it's, you know, in a small, um, an entrepreneur is going to start small anyway, we think. And so we hope that will, incre will continue and that we can get that worked out. It's something we really really want to do. And if you haven't taken advantage of what we have to offer or you don't have a library card, you can download a uh, or go online and do a digital library card. It's all free. We'll send the send you a um, card number and you can access all of our digital products. If you want to do it in-house, you can't do that right now with that digital card, but you can upgrade it if you come into the library once we reopen. But the digital library card will give you access to all of our uh, online materials from Libby to Hoopla to the research databases, um, to just our library card catalog, anything you need, it's on there with the digital library card. And it just go to our website, which is www.andersonlibrary.org. You can look under borrow and that'll get you to library card, but also some of our digital resources. And then if you want to follow us on Facebook, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. So follow us, find out information about what's going on at the library and keep up to date so that you know what's happening at your, at your public library. <music>